friends, Kim from Stamping and Perfection. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I would love to have you hit subscribe and click that bell to get notifications every time I upload a new video. Today I'm playing with this fantastic Dream Big stamp set from Maker Forte, and I've decided I'm going to make some mini slimline cards. My cards are going to be uh, three and a half by six and a half. So I, it's just a favorite little size, and these images are uh, kind of small and delicate, and I want to do some quick and easy watercoloring with them, and it's going to just be a quick coloring technique with a water brush and some water, like this doesn't even have water in it, and um, I'm just going to go straight from my ink pads. So I just definitely want to play with them. I think the images are so, so sweet. So I'm going to start by stamping all of these onto a piece of white cardstock. So I've added all, all six of the images, and they're just so sweet. I've added them to my original size Misty, and I've got a piece of cardstock in here, and I'm going to use my um, Maker Forte Remarkable ink pad. This is Eclipse Black. I love these ink pads. They're foam pads, so um, when you're stamping something as delicate as these, you don't want to um, just smush them right down there. And before I start, since this is the first time I've used this stamp set, I'm going to take my Pentel High Polymer Eraser. It's a very inexpensive eraser. You can get it at CVS in their office supply section or Target. Um, you can get it at any office supply store and even the, some grocery stores with small office supply sections will have them. So they often come with mechanical pencils, which are also very nice pencils, by the way. The Pentel mechanical pencils. But I'm just conditioning my stamp. And there's lots of ways to do that. That's just the habit I'm in when I first use a stamp set. Okay, so I'm going to take my ink pad and I'm going to gently just dab, 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 dab. These are really delicate little outline images and I just want to gently dab, dab, dab. Now, this is a water-based ink pad and I do plan on using um, my ink pad with a little bit of water to color my images in, so I'm going to be really careful. This ink pad is great for Copic coloring, so it would be just perfect for Copics, but not everybody has Copics, and um, I feel like there's a huge learning curve, or a huge confidence curve to creating stuff with Copic coloring, um, not only like to share it with other people, but you know, to make a card for someone and give it away. So there we go. Now, this did not come out perfectly. That's okay. I'm using my Misty. I'm going to go over this again. I think it's better to go over something twice, very gently stamping, than to go over it once and smashing it in. And I'm just tap, tap, tapping. Now you'll also notice I'm not pushing down. I'm also not using my smusher tool. I could very gently just rub it across, but I'm not pushing it down at all. I'll just rub it across. I would do the same thing with my hands without doing a lot of pushing. And I do like to leave it there for a minute or so to give the ink a chance to absorb into the paper. And I have a couple spots I still don't have. And you know what? My stamp is not, like in these two spots here, my stamp is not filled in all the way. And this one I just didn't, I think I just didn't even press that at all. I also have had my Misty for a while. And I feel like it's a little warped in places. So one thing that I find that is very helpful is to take a um, take a piece of scrap paper like this. I'll just fold it in half and then slide it under. 
And I think it may be that my images just are not complete. Like there's a little faulty manufacturing of this particular stamp set, which is unusual for Maker Forte, I have to say. And I've definitely moved it. So I'll, what I'll do is take a um, marker and just finish the ones that I want to finish. Like I'll fill it in. And I've got lots of markers. And if you use a 0.1 marker, they work great. This is a new marker that I've recently gotten, like a little journaling pen. And I can just take the journaling pen and complete it just like that. Or complete the star or the little star. This is actually a little too big. I need to find one of my smaller ones. This is not 0.1. But a point one works beautifully. And even using the larger one, you can see it worked fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and color these in. Now I just got the newest um, ink pad. This is Pit Stop Pink. Very pretty. Here it is swatched out. And when I swatch, I always use a solid stamp so I can see what the solid color looks like. It looks very different dry than it did wet, so you want to make sure you give it time to dry. I always use a polka dot stamp, and then I take my water brush and just add a little ink to my water brush and a little bit of water and just pull it out to see what it looks like watercolored. And then this is a little blender brush that I use as well. And then I take a hole punch and punch out a little circle of color that I glue to the top of my reinker. And I always buy the reinkers when I buy the ink pads because these foam pads definitely need to be reinked a lot more often than my felt pads. So um, I, I actually like to have the reinkers handy for that very reason. But here you can see we have the Look at the colors that they've come out. they've come out with. Sorry about that, um, but you can see all the different. And I have more pinks on this, and I just flip them over. I have them on a ring, so you have a nice variety of pinks. And this is a nice addition. This pit stop pink between the tip tree jam and the reds. And they've got some pretty corals, and some of them almost have a um, like a neon color to them. Some of them do have. She does have a line of neon colors that are super bright. I don't have those swatched in here. I don't think. I don't think I put the neon ones in here. I don't use those very often, um, mostly because I really like jewel tones, and I like the inks that feel like they have a little bit of gray, like this Cotswold green, but the greens and blues in this, um, you can see all the different greens and blue greens and um, here, like there's just such a variety of those. And then we get into the blues. And I'm still waiting for a true navy blue. Can't wait to get that. Lots of purples. And then there are a few neutrals so far. So looking forward to a few more neutrals. And then, oops, here are the neon ones. And you can see there's one, at least one in all the different color families. And they're super bright. And it looks like my purple and my blue neon ones really need to be re-inked because I don't use them very often. Look how bright that yellow is. So pretty. There's a really bright orange, outrageous orange. But the key ring or the ring with the color swatches on them is super helpful to have when I'm trying to decide what colors I want to use. Okay, so I want to start. Let's start with this little guy. And I'm going to fussy cut these out with my brother's scan and cut. So I need a yellow for the moon. And I grabbed a whole bunch of, I've got a gray. And I grabbed a whole bunch of colors I thought I might want to use. I've got a little purple. I've got 
two yellows. I think I'm going to use the brighter of the two yellows. And I'm going to use the frappe, I think, for the little bear. Okay, so let's do a little bit of yellow first. I'll put my card bases and card fronts aside for the moment. And I'm just going to squirt a little bit of water, squish on some ink. This is Yellowstone ink, and I'm going to pull out my aqua pen and a paper towel. Just like this. And I'm going to wet my brush. And then add some water to the yellow. And the more water I add, the lighter the color will be. And again, this is dye-based ink. So I want to be careful as I'm doing this because the black ink will run if I'm not careful. So I just want to add a little bit of yellow here. So I won't get too close to the edges, which will leave a little bit of white along the edges, and I always think that's a really nice touch. full-on color here. To one side, or maybe I will let that dry and come back and add a little bit more yellow to one side. There we go. Then I'll just clean out my brush a little by rubbing it in the water. And that's that. And let's use this new pink for that heart. It's this very bright pink. So I just want to add a little bit of bright pink to that one side. Grab a little bit more water water it down a little tiny bit more and then fill in with slightly lighter pink and just dab at the edges so I don't have a harsh line there so I get a little bit of variation in color and then for the stars I think I want the stars to be really love, this is one of my favorite colors, this Icy Mist color, and it's so pretty ink blended. I'm just going to add a little bit of this to the stars. just like that. And then I've pulled out the fog. And I'm gonna, the fog is a really light gray. I consider that a secret weapon color. And I just want to add a little bit of the gray to the clouds. And I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just kind of putting it in little circles around so that it makes the clouds look kind of fluffy. So just like little C's around the edge of the cloud. You can put a couple swoops into the center. Because that always makes it look really realistic. And I take a little bit of this pink and add it to the bottom of the bare feet and a dab inside the bunny ears 
in the bottom of the bunny feet. There we go. And then let's pull out a little bit of that frappe. And I also pulled out the flat white. Because the flat white is actually a little bit darker brown than the frappe. And I thought I would use the frappe for the bear, or the bunny that the bear is holding. And there's just not room to do anything fancy, so I'm just filling it in with color. And then I'll use this flat white for the sweet little bear. There's a little bit more room here, so you can play with pulling the color out and like making it a little bit darker in some spots and lighter in others, which is always, I think, a really fun thing to do. So I'll add a little bit more water to my ink puddle and kind of pull it out and really dab those um, lines in between there so I don't get harsh lines where I did it a little bit darker. bit of a line just helps it to look watercolored and I'm getting a little bit of that um, ink that black ink running in the um, on the face so I'm gonna stop so I don't add too much more water there okay and that one is done and you can see it's just a very sweet little image and super relaxing to do so I I put a movie on, I went ahead and finished coloring in all these sweet little images. I used all of the same colors. I did add some uh, of that um, blueberry, uh, what's it called, blueberry muffin, I think, um, to the cup with the little elephant in it. And I was going to cut them with my brother Scan and Cut, but I felt like I might lose some little sweet little details there. And I decided I would go ahead and... Um, just cut them out either with the circle dies or with my trimmer. So I've got some card fronts here cut at three by six inches that I will use on top of my card bases, which are a finished size of three and a half by six and a half. So um, I'm going to go ahead and trim this down with my trimmer. And by the way, my card bases are cut at seven by six and a half and I scored and folded them at three and a half. So I'm gonna pick one of these little images and I will pull out my circle dies and um, I, I discovered that my circle dies, I didn't have enough room between my images to cut them out with my circle dies, so I just trim them down with my trimmer and I'll use a different trick with my circle dies to use them on these little card fronts. So I picked one of the sizes that um, didn't cut off too much of my image and I'm going to just create a circle on the card front, a, like a circle cut out on the card front with the circle die. So I'm just trying to pick one image where I'm going to get most of that image in the little circle that I'm cutting out. So I'm going to use this cute elephant. I love the grass underneath it. And that's just Cotswold Green that I just kind of squiggled along with uh, my water brush. And I noticed that I did not use too much of the water when I was coloring. I just mixed water in with the ink so that it would spread easier on my paper. And if I want it darker in one spot, I try to let it dry a little. I let the first layer dry and then just add more ink where I want it to be darker and then let that dry. All the while staying away from my black edge because I don't want that black edge to run. Now you can actually cover your black edge with clear embossing powder and that will make it 
permanent and then you can watercolor it in with your dye ink so that's something else you can do as well so um, that's one trick if you don't want to be careful with or you need some practice being careful with how close you get to the black lines when you're using your water brush then embossing it um, with some clear embossing powder works beautifully so I've got that cut out and now I just want to fit my little image in behind there so I'm going to pull that guy out and I'm just going to glue it on so now that one isn't going to work because I didn't have enough uh, of the card stock behind it to actually put it in there so I just keep playing with all of them to see which one is best and I still think this little elephant works best with this little card design. So I'll try to like slide it over to get as much of all the little goodies. I love the butterfly. I just love the little bugs flying around the, the sweet elephant. And I think he turned out really cute. He's just a combination of the fog gray the flat white and that frappe color. So I'm using the the icy mist and I've got one of those little brushes little blender brushes I'm just putting a light amount of ink I like this icy mist just to add a little uh, sky detail here behind it and I like it because it blends on nice and light without a lot of effort like I feel like um, I have a very heavy hand when I ink blend so I feel like using the icy mist kind of helps me with that. Now notice I'm not trying to get the blend perfect because when you look up at the sky, it's not perfectly blended blue. There's lots of white space in between the blue spaces. There's darker blue and lighter blue there. So I like it not to be perfectly blended when I'm doing sky. And I feel the same way about grass and sand and uh, stone paths and things like that. So now I'm just going to add some adhesive to the back of that and attach it and I'm deciding that you know what I want to pick out a stencil so I've got my Maker Forte stencils and these are the older ones and I'm just going through the book you can see I have one of the, the um, snap binders I've got lots of those uh, full-size clear envelopes to store my stencils and I just want to add a tiny little bit of detail. I don't want to stencil the whole back. I just want a little something to give a little more detail to the front of my card. I just don't want a plain white card. So I pulled out this, um, this is almost like, these are hexagons. And um, I don't know what this stencil is called. And I don't think it's available anymore. But um, another good one would be some kind of lattice or bubbles or something like that. It would give you just a really fun detail. And I've still got lots of white space on that side of the card because I want to add a sentiment there. So I pulled out my liquid glue and I'm just dabbing it all around just to attach that little guy to the front there. And... I'm loving the way this looks like I really like the way that looks I think it's just really fun I've got lots of color for the front of my card and I've got a lot of fun little detail there with that stenciling and I believe I used the frappe for that and I did get a little bit of I smudged a little bit liquid glue remember is water-based most of it and if you get that liquid glue on your ink, it will actually smear the ink. So you want to be careful with that. And I did get it on the ink a little bit and it got a little on the side, but I used my sanded eraser. That's a Tombow Mono Sanded Eraser. And I love that thing. It's so worn down because I use it every time I create a card. So before I attach that card front to the card base that I'm using, I'm t I pulled out a big blender brush and I'm adding a little bit of that color to the very edge of my card front here. This is the base, the card base. So this is the front side of my card base and I'm just adding some detail. I kind of want it to be a little darker at the edges and a little lighter as it goes in. So almost sort of an ombre effect but I just want there to be some color below that card panel just for fun it's a beautiful thing about dye inks that we can actually do all kinds of really pretty ink blending we can pull out our 
stencils, which I think are one of the most cost-effective tools we have in our stash because they're so versatile. You can use them in so many ways. And I love to just ink blend through them. I just think it's a pretty effect. Now I'm just adding some foam tape. And um, this is the biggest foam tape I have. My foam tames, tape stash has really depleted this summer. I think it's time for me to make a big order to resupply my craft drawer in foam tape. I've been trying to use less of it lately because um, while I think it's pretty to add the dimension, I mean sometimes it costs you extra to send to mail the card to someone with that. So um, I have been trying to use less lately, but when I'm doing it like a white card front and a white card base, I actually really like to have some of that foam detail. Now I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue on top of that foam. I learned this from my friend Lene, and um, that allows you to have some wiggle room time when you put this down. And I always open up my card base like this to put my card front on the card base because that helps me actually center it really well. So I'm just adding that and now I just need to add my sentiment and I need to add some crown jewel gems of course and I'm sticking this into my misty and I'm going to add my sentiment and I love the sentiments in this stamp set. So I stamped that with my Eclipse Black ink. I added a bunch of crown jewel gems in one of the blue shades that I have. I'll put links to all of this stuff below. I just love how that card turned out. How sweet is that? And I still have the other five images to create cards with. So thank you so much for watching, friends. I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up and share with your friends so they can find me too. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day.